You're listening to episode 849 of the Father Bills Podcast. Welcome back. This week's episode is entitled, What is True Freedom? Given on the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time, 2022. At the beginning of Mass, there's an opening prayer. It's called a collect. It collects our prayers, heart and mind, to the one prayer the priest is offering. And often when we hear it, it kind of goes in one ear and out the other, and I'm as guilty when I'm sitting in the pews as you are, and I'm thinking, what did they just say? And I know you probably heard it and you remember it, but just for me then, and maybe for the others, I'm going to reread it again, because that's going to be the theme today. And I'm abbreviating. Oh God, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters who believe in Christ. Who is that? That's us, yes. And here's the key. May they receive True freedom and an everlasting inheritance. So I want to focus on the idea of true freedom. What is it to have true freedom? How can we have it? What's the results of true freedom? Now in our culture, we, of course, want to be free, right? We're a country. We have free speech. We have, I can do whatever I want. But there are some limits to that. But you know what? Just to make that clear, I'm feeling pretty spontaneous. It's a free country. I think I'm going to do whatever I want. I think I want to play the piano. Just because I want to. I'm going to do it. Um, Can you please step aside? (laughs) Yes, listen to this. There it is. No, 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 no. Don't clap for me. That was horrible. (laughs) That was untrained and undisciplined. And that's what you get when you get somebody that doesn't know what they're doing. Who, by free will, decides, I'm going to do whatever I want. Now, when you're hearing this, think about that first moment, like, oh, my goodness. That was bad. What do I say to Father Bill? It's bad. You can say that to Father Bill. It was bad. But now let's think about someone, maybe it's you, who is trained. How many of you play an instrument? Any any kind? Yeah? Okay. How about the keyboard, the piano? How many play the piano? Okay. Ken, are you getting these names? Because we're looking for volunteers. Yeah, excellent. Now, can you play the piano? I got a couple questions for you. First of all, can you just, you're just sitting at the piano, just play something with your free will, whatever it is. Sounds pretty, huh? Sounds beautiful. (sighs) It's familiar even, right? But it's beautiful. It's not harsh. I mean, what's going on in your heart? Ah. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you. Now, you've been playing for many years. I don't know how many. How many years you've been playing? Since high school. Since high school. So that was like five years, maybe? <laughs> yeah. No, and so you've been practicing and practicing. Was there times where there was some competing things, like maybe friends wanted to go out and do something and you needed to practice? Has that ever happened? Often, often. okay, often. What's that again? They want to listen to records. Yeah, but you needed to practice. And so sometimes you would sacrifice something that would have been fun and good to make sure that you're practicing something maybe a greater good. And guess what? We're the beneficiaries of that. Wasn't that great? Wasn't it? Yeah, it was beautiful. You know, there's a company, I think OCP. You want to talk to them. They may want to look for somebody. (laughs) 
to hire you maybe, I don't know. This is an expression, an example of what can happen if we take the whatever we want to do approach to freedom, but actually hone it into true freedom. Because freedom isn't just whatever I want to do. Freedom is being the best version of yourself. Matthew Kelly speaks it in this way. Another one is to say, freedom is doing the good. John Paul would say it that way. So we take our freedom and we don't ruin things. We may need to be disciplined in our freedom, deciding specifically what we should do with that so that we may continue with more good things. And when we do express the freedom that is true freedom, we resonate like beautiful music. This can happen in other places like sports. I was talking to Colby at the last Mass. He, he's a wide receiver for a Jesuit. And I said, what is it you like about being a wide receiver? And he said, I love to catch. I'm like, that's right. So we started comparing people. Like I was thinking, Santonio San Holmes of the Steelers at the Super Bowl, a couple of minutes maybe, and he has to catch this ball and he has almost no room. And he reaches out to grab with his fingertips, grabs the ball, and touchdown. It was beautiful. Yeah, and he was thinking of Odell Beckham and the things. Odell Beckham actually has practiced trying to catch fumbling balls, and that's why he's so good at it. And guess what other receivers are kind of trying to copy him? See, what they've taken is an incredible talent they've been given and honed it for the good, for something that will make things beautiful. Even in science, there's an attempt to bring together the theories of physics into one called the unified theory. And one of the qualities that scientists, religious and not, are looking to is whether it will be beautiful, harmonious, simple. See, there's something about that that we resonate with. And the more complex and convoluted it will be, it will be set with, beset with doubt because it doesn't seem to fit this thing that we know. Because when we live our lives, when we have truly been free, we know what it's like. We've been given all kinds of desires, affections, and ultimately, you know, they come from God. But sometimes we can distort them. Like as a, as a husband and wife, as a spouse, the order is God first, your spouse second, your children third, and then everybody else after that. Th then work, right? Sometimes it gets messed around. It gets turned upside down. It gets disordered, and chaos can occur, a disruption in the marriage, and sometimes even a break in the marriage. Football games are a contact sport, but they could become a gang fight, right? Some people, somebody at their mass said, you know, hockey is actually a sport, which is actually an excuse for a fight. I'm like, well, I don't know about that, but there's a lot of fights in, in hockey, right? We're called then to be free. God has made us. He wants us to be free. We hear in Galatians 5, verse 1, that Christ has come for freedom, to set us free. He, in his own freedom, chose to sacrifice himself. Why? So that we may be free. But free from what? What's shackling us? Well, when we take things and disorder them, whenever we sin, there's this weight. I know I feel it when I sin. And it's, it just sits there. And I don't, I'm not myself. I'm not the best version of myself. I am snarky. That's my word. I'm not patient. I might even say a few choice words that will not help a relationship. And you know what sets me free? Confession. You know who's there in confession? Jesus. So with Jesus, we are set free. He can set us free from those sins, those disorders. And sometimes we just make mistakes and ruin things. Like we say things and we didn't mean to say them. You're like, why did I say that? We can restore those by being truthful. So being free is also being truthful. But ultimately, if you think of freedom, true freedom is with Jesus. Whatever is going on, whatever relationship is in trouble, Christ can set you free. You may actually have to detach from things. When things have gone awry, like maybe you have money, and money no longer is just a means to something, it is the end. Greed. 
You can be set free from greed. Maybe you have some power, you're a boss, but you use that to belittle all those below you or the people that are working for you. God can set you free from that so that you can be the best boss ever. In fact, all these desires that we may have, if we have Jesus as, as number one, then we can actually enjoy them. We can be better with those things. We can be the best boss. We can be the best employee. We can be the best husband or wife, or son or daughter. Now, do you remember in the gospel, Jesus said you must hate your father, mother, child, and all that? I suppose siblings are like, yeah, right, I got that one. No, he's not actually saying, the word is hate, yes. But it's hyperbole, it's a form of speech, an exaggeration to make a point. That nothing should come before Jesus. Now, that's either absolute arrogance, right? Or because he's God, it's the absolute truth. And I note for myself that when I have this in right, when I have Christ first, then I can love football, which I do love. Well, I like. But it doesn't then become an obsession. Some may like beer, but they don't become alcoholic because that's not an addiction. Some may be struggling with drugs. They can be set free. See, with God in our life, with God first, we can actually enjoy the things that we are given. So there's so many wonderful things, and they never overtake us, or they likely won't overtake us, as long as we have Christ first. And when we don't have him first, we're prone to disorder. We're prone to saying things we shouldn't say, and doing things we shouldn't do, and messing things up, because our hearts were broken. So this whole thing about true freedom is an inside job. It's about our heart. So, how do we do this? Well, again, Christ number one. When Christ is number one, then look at all the things that may have captured you, that may have enslaved you in a big way or a small way. And maybe this week, here's how, maybe some homework. Maybe do three things. Find three things and let them go. Maybe it's, maybe you need to go to your shoe rack. I got a hundred shoes. Get rid of some. Maybe there's some other things in the garage that you don't need. Maybe get rid of those or one of those. And maybe there's a relationship that has gone bad and it needs to be repaired. Maybe you might need to either let go of the relationship or die to yourself and let go of the argument that you are involved in. Because sometimes pride captures us, the sin of pride. And even though we may be wrong, we're right, right? Well, and we can let go. There's so three things. They can be physical. They can be a, an emotional tie. It could be a relationship that needs to be mended. If you can think of these three things, attempt them with God's grace. And then watch. How does that feel? What's now going on after you've let go of those things? Hopefully you will not be enslaved by them anymore. Hopefully you will now be freed of those things. I don't know if you watched the video I did for this past week. I used to love a pair of speakers. <laughs> I was really, as a college student, like, I love speakers. I spent money on these, I, all that. And I went off to do some work for a summer. I came back, and I forgot about them. Like, oh, those speakers, yeah. They now were just speakers. They're great, but I idolized an object. Ugh. But we're all prone to this. God has to be number one. So there's things in your way, some homework. Think about three of them and let them go. Put Jesus first and you will experience true freedom. Thank you again for listening to this episode of the Father Bills Podcast. Now, the person that was the keyboardist, I uh, kept saying his name is Ken. His name is Ken Canedo. And you might note, if you are going to Catholic Mass, anywhere in the United States, pretty much, uh, or, and especially if you use organ Catholic press missiles or missilettes and music issues, uh, as he's one of the authors of many 
uh, works of music. And it's an amazing treat to have him, or <laughs> it's an amazing treat for me to be actually be at his parish where he has been now as the pastor uh, with him uh, co- collaborating in ministry. So he's the lead keyboardist, and of course, uh, he's very accomplished. Sometimes I've uh, seen him where he was playing the keyboard, and then there was a, a bass somewhere, but there was nobody playing bass. But Ken had a um, another keyboard, and from there he was playing the bass line separate uh, with a, a like a, an electronic or computerized keyboard that uh, simulated uh, the bass itself. So, um, you know, he's pretty talented. So anyway, that that's the story with him, and that's why I was kind of kidding with him about getting a job at OCP because he already has one. Now, if you have any questions or comments, I encourage you to go to my website, fatherbill.org. Uh, there you can find my front page. I've started putting now my Friday Reflections. Uh, this is something that we do at the uh, Parish of Holy Trinity. Uh, I do the Friday, and a gal named Aaron does a Wednesday. And if we had a parochial vicar, they'd probably be doing the Monday uh, online, it's kind of a video reflection on YouTube. And you can get to see that if you want to go to YouTube and just look up Holy Trinity Beaverton. Again, on my website, you'll just see it if you go to fatherbuild.org. And, of course, there's other uh, links on my website for other podcasts. And if you want to ask any questions, you can do that right from that website, fatherbuild.org, F-R-B-I-L-L.org. Until next week, may God bless you and have a great day. A great week. Yeah. Bye-bye.